Tap House West has had to do things like change their menu and cut employees' hours, all of this in an effort to stay alive until they're allowed to reopen. Stores in the mall are excited about opening back up, but things are going to look a lot different come Monday. Even though you must make reservations to come to the rack, different parts of the gym can be rented out in 90 minute increments. So far, it's been a success. Vice President Pence said that there is more that unites Americans than divides. He cited a love of freedom and faith as those examples. While most of the damage from the tornado was to property, there was one casualty. The area has since been cleaned for the most part, yet residents still remember that frightful day. It might be surprising to some that the restaurant and store Tienda y Taqueria Guerrero, which has been in the middle of Austin for more than a decade, is still a secret to some. It surprises me that a lot of people who've lived in Austin like so don't know about us. Over 15 years of successful business in Austin, the Serranos decided to give back to the community when they saw the need. They need to know that we're all in this together. So they're like, you know what, let's start this. This refers to a food drive last month, the store giving out bags of groceries to anyone struggling during the pandemic. There was a lot more people than we actually expected. There was over 200 people that came the first time. So we're like, why not do it again? Bags of chicken, vegetables, bread, rice, and beans served from 9 to 11 and again between 4 to 6. So that just told us, like, we have to do it again, help out more people. Business slowed when the restaurant closed, but employees were willing to help put on the drive again this month. We have some employees coming in earlier than they should be or just coming in on their days off. As were the suppliers. We had to call them and be like, hey, can you come in? like on Wednesday or on Tuesday because we really have to prepare for this. The hundreds they serve include more than just their regular customers. Um, it's everyone. There's people that have been coming from Albert Lee, Rochester that have heard about us. Um, it's not just Hispanics. It's a lot of older people too, different races. For their efforts, they've received cards, good reviews, as well as a lot of gratitude. Thank you so much for doing this. Like We really appreciate it. Knowing that we're helping out a lot of people it's just so heartwarming to us. Bringing families, employees, and residents together. Um, I really like to see that we all come together and that we are all here to help each other. And we just want to give back a little bit of what you have all done for us to the community, and Austin will always be home. In Austin, Alex Tejada, KTTC News. Lacrosse, bustling with visitors from all over Minnesota Tuesday afternoon. La Crescent, Winona, Rochester, uh, someone said St. Olaf. Some in desperate need of a haircut. Well, I've had legit a line at my door, people bringing books and chairs and waiting up to an hour before I open to try to get in. Others looking to quench their thirst. When Minnesota's closed or stays closed, we'll, we'll come over here to Wisconsin, sure. Or a place to stay. A lot of the hotels were filled up with folks from Minnesota. Yet while demand is high, safe distancing and capacity guidelines remain at most establishments. Happy hour here would be full, and it's not. That includes movie theaters. It's the same experience, just everyone's a little more spaced out. Uh, our bar is open, we've got movies. Some restaurants in town stayed closed until today, preferring to stay cautious even when allowed to reopen. We're worried about long term as far as financially, and it's going to be fine. But yeah, in the short term, you know, we want our employees and our customers to keep coming back. The businesses not only have new policies, but some even have new deals, like Polite's $10 haircut. Everyone just had a difficult couple months, and I thought maybe it would help. With all the Minnesotans in town, the Wisconsin barber said he has noticed a difference between the two states' as residents. I think it's easier to make Wisconsin residents more handsome than Minnesota residents. Barrett, the protesters were led by young organizers who spearheaded the march from Martin Luther King Jr. Park to Mayo Park. And just like last weekend, speakers shared stories of hope and cries for change. But after the speakers, this week's protest looked a little different. I just want to let y'all know, don't give up. You know what I'm saying? This is a fight, this is a fight that we got to fight for. But one thing for sure is change. You know what I'm saying? It's family, it's family here. You know what I mean? People of all races. I love all of y'all. No justice, no peace. And all ages. We may be different in our own ways. We were coming together demanding justice, and that's where the beauty lies. Peacefully demanding for change. We asked for the defunding of the police and for the funding to be located toward, allocated towards education, health care, and mental health resources. One speaker shared a personal story of racial profiling at the hands of police officers. 
we was taught that racism was over. It was a thing of the past. But when I turned 18 years old, we learned that it was fully awake. So we got the babies over here. They lead a protest. But it got to be more than them. It got to be grown folks. After all the speakers, Whitehorn led a reenactment of Floyd's final eight minutes, while the crowd laid down in honor of all lives lost to police brutality. We are beyond tired, beyond frustrated, beyond sad. We are angry. While hundreds showed up again this Saturday, the organizers recognize there is still racism in the community. Just try to try to think from another point of view, open your mind a little bit more. Yeah. With a promise that voices will be heard, even if they have been silenced in the past. Well, guess what? I got a big mouth. And you're not going to shut me down. You're not going to shut me down. You're not going to put no chains on me. The change is here. The change is now. Because we can't breathe. At Mayo Park, volunteers set up a voter registration table. The speakers also preach the message of voting out the representatives that do not want to work with the community to end systemic racism. Live in the studio, Alex Tejada, KTDC News.